Mr. Abercrombie here. Uh, I'm going to walk you through how to make a bar graph in Microsoft Excel and put error bars on that bar graph. One of the things that, one of the skills I want you to have this year is being able to both graph data, graphically represent your data, and then analyze and interpret that data in a meaningful way. And that's going to involve some statistics. So we've, we've already covered in class what is a standard deviation? What is a standard error? 95% confidence intervals. Um, these are ways of providing some more information about our data, letting us know how good this data is, and whether or not groups or samples that we're collecting uh, are statistically different from each other. Okay, we've talked about the overlapping bars, the error bars, and what that means. And so all I want to do with this little video is just give you a tutorial on how to insert those error bars um, so that you can make better graphs that provide a better reflection of the, the differences in our data. So I just made this data set up, okay? This is the effect of food types on hamster mass. We've got five brands of food here, and uh, what I've done is I've calculated the mean, which is the average, the standard deviation, standard error, 95% confidence interval. How do we do that, and how do we make a pretty nice little professional graph like you see here? First thing, you've got your raw data, and you put that in columns, and, and we've got 18 individuals um, that represent um, these samples. And you can see those here in these columns. I've just duplicated the brand names right here. I'll show you why in a second. Um, because what I want to do is I want to graph the averages of all this data, and then I'm going to calculate the statistics. The error bars in this graph actually represent the 95% confidence interval. So if we review this really quickly, our standard deviation tells us the spread of the data, how much variation is in each, uh, in this case, the column of data, each brand, referencing the mass. Standard error tells us how good that data is. And if you have a huge error bar, this one's pretty big in, in relation to the other ones, that tells us that data uh, has quite a bit of vari variability in it, taking into account the sample size. So we take our standard deviation, we divide by the square root of n, which is the sample size. All the 95% confidence interval is, if you, if you recall, is technically 1.96, but two times, it's okay if you use two times the standard error. So these error bars, the mean is represented at the peak of this bar, right? And then you go up and below. A 95% confidence interval is the values in between these two brackets here. Okay, that's your confidence interval. So that means if these error bars overlap, then we can say with 95% confidence that those two are not significantly different. And if they do not overlap, like these two do not overlap, the, that bottom bar, that top bar, that bottom bar, we can say that those are statistically different from each other. You're going to be using this function uh, option, calculate averages. All you have to do is, is I like to set up something like this, and below that column of data, just create a cell. And we want to go to function, and over here you'll have a, a bunch of functions you can choose from. Um, you want to click average like I've done here, um, and then it's going to prompt you to highlight your data, which I've already done here, okay? So when the cursor is blinking and you've already done that, then you just hit enter, and there's my average, 38.9444. We can adjust the decimal places and all that later if we want. I want to do that same function for all of this data. So the way to do that in Excel, you can see when I go over to that box and it turns like a black plus sign, I'm going to grab that, just click it, and then drag it over all to the other columns as well in that row. Okay, so what just happened? There's a little uh, formatting issue. You want to put fill formatting only, okay, with this little, little anchor. And what that's going to do is, all right, now you see our, our graph comes back to normal. Um, that just makes things a lot faster. Now I can do that, that type of approach for these other statistics as well. But how do we get standard deviation? Well, same as the average, it's a function. Okay, so we're gonna, instead of entering in each one of these um, manually, like you're doing with your homework assignment, 
we're going to make Microsoft Excel do this for us. So we, uh, we just select function, we go to standard deviation STDEV, and then similarly we just highlight our data. In this case it was B3 through B20, and that's going to allow us to do that as well. You can grab the corner and drag it and paste it just like I did with these, and that calculation corresponds to each of these columns. So that's a pretty cool feature of Excel, makes things a little easier. Standard error, remember that standard error, just uh, if we look at that formula, all it is is standard deviation divided by square root of n. So uh, when we hit that cell, we look up here, all I did was I put standard deviation. This is the tricky part, okay, because there's no standard error function in Excel. You have to manually type it in. Uh, pain, I know, but uh, it's one of those things. We're going to add this divided by sign, which is the forward slash, then we're going to put in the square root function. Square root is SQRT when you select it from the function. What we're looking for is N, right? The square root of N. That's going to be 18. Now here's, here's the tricky part. Because we're taking this and making this whole calculation here, we want to make sure we have the appropriate number of parentheses. Notice at the end I've got two there. If I were to only have one, I would get an error, and I would not get the correct answer. But because I've got two there, it's correct, and I'm going to hit enter. Boom, there's my standard error. If you recall, the 95% confidence interval is all it is is two times the standard error. Look at these numbers, 1.017, 2.035. So the easy way to calculate this is just set up a little formula. Two asterisks, which is multiply in this format, and then whatever cell you're talking about. In this case, it was B24. Now, again, I can grab this uh, corner and, and drag it and, and get that calculation to correspond to each one of these columns. So that's how you do the actual calculations. Now, what about the graph? I want to start with just my averages. And the reason I've added these brands down here is so I can just, just do this really easily to create a graph. I'm going to insert a graph. Uh, you could go here, you could go here. Recommended charts, boom just like that. Okay, so I went to insert after I highlighted it and then charts. This is my basic raw output. First thing that I need to do if I want to make these nice error bars is I need to change the settings in this in the data. On my trackpad I'm going to put two fingers down. I call this right clicking when, it, when you put two fingers on it and then press and you get this. Select data. Okay, so let's do that. Select data. And what that's going to allow us to do is, if we hit switch row columns, now all of a sudden the series are changed in a way that allows me to manually enter the standard error bars, the error bars that I um, am going to put into this graph. Very quickly, how do we do that? Well, we just select our, our data, uh, it shows you here, I just clicked on that, and what I want to do is add a chart element. I went up here to add chart element, and then I want to add some error bars, right? Now, standard error, I'm not going to do that one because I want to add the 95% confidence interval. So I'm going to go down here to the more error bar options, and the only way Excel will let you do this is just manually put it in. So I've got an error bar that you see here. I'm going to go to custom. And we have to actually specify that value. I know you're thinking, holy cow, this is a lot of steps. But uh, it's really not that bad once you get going. Highlighted the positive error value. Remember, this is going to be two times the standard error above, above and below the mean. So we need a positive and a negative. I'm going to select 95% confidence interval for the top one. And there it shows up right there. I want the 95% confidence interval to go above and below the mean for that same uh, value, which in this case is 2.03. I'm going to highlight the negative as well, go back to the same one, highlight that, uh, and then click OK. Okay, there's my uh, correct error bar. Um, and so that's how you do it. You just uh, you add that chart element. Um, if, I, if I'm going to do the next one, and I want you guys to, to do this on a, on a separate uh, sheet here, but just to walk through it again, 
you highlight, click that bar, add chart element, error bars, and error bar options, custom, specify value. Um, for this next one now, I, I want to go to brand B, right? So I, I'm going to be clicking this one uh, above and below the main. Okay, so there's there's the second one, and so on. So your your chart will look like this one here. Um, and so the last thing I just wanted to cover is uh, how do you make it look professional and, and adjust the uh, add a legend and, and that sort of thing, add a title, well, you're just really just going to go back to this add chart element and all of that stuff is in here. Uh, you can change the t titles of the axis. Uh, you can change the chart title. With, it, with each one of these, you'll see more options at the bottom, which will help you uh, tweak these uh, as you wish. Data labels. And for this bar graph, I chose legend to specify the brands since I had highlighted that in my original data. So see if you can do that. The, the assignment is to go through what we've gone through here, calculating mean, de standard deviation, standard error, 95% confidence interval on this sheet two. Okay, so I'm going to go down here to sheet two. There's the data. The effect of fertilizer on helianthus height um, in centimeters, that's sunflower, um, at four weeks post-germination. So you've got one, two, three, four brands same sort of set of data. You're going to have to count these individuals. Mean, standard deviation, standard error. I'd like you to go through this activity, uh, create a graph that looks good like uh, the one up here on the first page, and submit that to eBackpack. So that's the assignment. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, thanks.